Hello and welcome back to another CM Travels video. It's wonderful to have you with me here today. My name is Murray Forbes. We're going to be talking about the Z62, the 500 AFP lens, and that old trusty 7200 F4 using the FTZ adapter. Now we took all this gear to some wonderful locations in Namibia, which you can see me talking here. I actually did the whole introduction to you guys out in the field, but the wind. You can hear a bit of it now. It's along with me, some lovely gear from Nikon. No good. Hence why I've set up a lovely mic here, just the road mic, and now I've got the headphones on so that I know what kind of audio I'm giving to you. Because if you're anything like me, I just have to have good audio. It's just, it has to be. Anyway, let's dive into today's video. But first, you know what you have to do? What we have to do, and that's cue the intro. subscribers for being so late in producing another video for you guys we have been away for about four or five months and I have just hit the ground running since we got back but I'm so stoked to be in the studio again recording some cool interesting content for all of you so if you're new you know what to do hit that like hit that subscribe as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when you release our next video got some very nice content coming your way and I'm very excited about sharing it with you but first let's have a quick look at what we be talking about today this bad boy the nikon z62 i took the z7 and the z72 on the first trip unfortunately we didn't update the software <coughs> the software the firmware that was in there anyway moving on swiftly the z62 what an amazing amazing camera to take with me on safari it was superb i actually took two with me the one that you're currently seeing me filming on now with of course the ftz adapter if it looks a bit strange it's only because this is a very very important piece of equipment that i had to use on the fluid head which you see me on now i will put its name and description here talk a bit more about it later on in the video as well as the tripod again here's a little picture of the tripod and i wanted to show you with it on because it does work and that goes on the z62 of course which then was attached to this beauty it, it looks it, i mean it just looks sexy this thing i, I mean it's it's epic i would love to do a review if you're keen please leave a comment uh, if you think that you would be interested in this the the 500 afp f 5.6 that's what, what you're seeing me here with here and the f mount 500 f4 the new one whatever the new one is the efo something something i'll put its description somewhere here <laughs> so you can see what run i'm talking about and see what kind of separation difference we get and and different um what, what if, if 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 there is much of a difference between the two so if you think that might be a cool, cool idea leave that comment down below but that on the FTZ adapter of course on the Z62 that's what we're doing and I'm sure many many of you out there have this in your arsenal as I say or in the in the weapon cabinet the 70 to 200 AFS Nikkor 7200 L no F4G ED VR lens I think it's very very popular but you can hear I've got some sand in that focus ring unfortunately that noise we'll talk about that noise in a bit but firstly just a quick comparison with the Z7 and I'll do some probably some more in-depth looking at this but I was much happier with the Z62 than the Z72 only because I was using it a lot in video mode I took a lot of stills as well and I think the real difference between the two is the megapixels and I 
don't blow up images that are the size of my wall. So I don't need that big megapixels. However, if you do a lot of cropping and um, and things like that, and you need that that higher megapixel, then yeah, the Z7 II is the one for you. But I was happier with the Z6 II. Of course, quickly, super lightweight, and the build quality is absolutely superb. I don't think we have to do, I did an unboxing of this camera if you'd like to check it out and a, and a more in-depth review of the outside. But what we're talking about today is the modes. So one of the very, very important things that I figured out while it, just using it, and uh, I saw on a, on a couple of other uh, YouTube things as well, is the ability to be able to change between the autofocus modes because while I would like to say that the animal focus mode works really well it doesn't it probably does for cats and dogs but when you're taking here's an example of some elephants um, and you are filming them or, or you following them with your continuous focus in, with stills and with video, but that would be full uh, full time focus and a video mode. It doesn't figure out that it's an elephant. Also with a lion, here we go. Here's some footage of a lion, which you can see when you're tracking it. You're going, you're going, and then bang, you lose the focus. Any branches ahead, and I see as well. Looking and reviewing some of the footage, uh, we had a lovely sighting of a black rhino. I'll put quickly you can see here the black rhino and uh, those of you who have been lucky enough to see black rhino will know that they tend to be very skittish and if, if you're lucky enough to find one the sightings are normally quite quick so and you need the autofocus to be working in those in those in those instances so when i wasn't happy with the animal tracking mode i simply got my finger onto that second function button and on the front dial changed but from it's and it's actually it's difficult for me to, to show you but if you turn the dial from animal focus mode one over not to the right but and would be to the right it goes to the small spot metering and I think if you go one more over it's to the dynamic yeah so those three I was using interchangeably you see my hands are a bit small so I was actually using my pinky here and then here changing it and without having to take uh, if I wasn't using the eyepiece and using just the back you know I could go between those three modes so quickly so with well, the modes I'm talking about just to recap are the animal focus mode onto the spot and then onto the dynamic also with the video you don't of course get the dynamic focus mode in uh, in the video so that if you're wanting to do that set that up in the menu if you want me to do a video on that Again, leave a comment down below. Um, I'd be happy to do that for you. And how you set up this second function it might be set up actually as a do as a default. I'll, I'll probably is set up as the default, so no need to do a video. But that was very very important for me while being out in the field, being able to just quickly press that second function, change the focus mode. Now moving on to the two lenses. What an absolutely amazing lens and it's it's just an absolute if you're looking to get into wildlife photography particularly and and for birds and these sorts of things the 500 is afp f 5.6 is just an absolutely amazing lens i would highly highly recommend it and invest in it because there's just such a the difference in price between the 500 f4 and this bad boy it's just it, it it's big and if I could get the combo, you know, with with the mirrorless, or even find, you know, that the eight uh, eight eight fifty or the D eight fifty paired with this bad boy, I'd be more than happy. As I say, the the video modes and the DSLRs are just are not as strong as this, um, but paired with the FTZ adapter, the focusing is honestly it's so quiet, so so quiet. You almost don't hear it at all, and that was as i've been harping on about that's been the real difference between the dslrs and these mirrorless cameras in my personal opinion it's just the video is so much better and um, and the focusing is just absolutely stellar i did an in-depth review actually of the the 850d 
and the Z7, I think, with um, the FTZ adapter using the 500F4, and you can check that out here for actual samples of those two together, and the focusing is just really, really good. But on that note, the 70 to 200, because it doesn't have that silent motor, it's very noisy in video mode, and that audio does come through on your microphone, unless you have a microphone that's not on, attached to the camera and is on a boom somewhere else, um, then you're lucky, one of those lucky people that has a, I don't know, a, an audio guy with you filming, and that's great. But for us regular Joes, you know, having the the mic attached to the top of the camera um, on the horseshoe, you know, you pick up that sound. And, uh, if, and for that reason, I didn't use this lens with a lot of um, video when I when I when I had the opportunity to get around that, I would change to f uh, manual focus and use the the highlights um, peaking to see where my focus was with this lens. I found that to be better, but um, as you probably know, if the, if wildlife is moving around, following it with with the focus uh, and keeping the camera still very very difficult. But the positive with the seventy to two hundred is that it is possible to hand hold it in a steady manner. Forget that idea with the 500, not possible. Even in a slight breeze, I'll show that video up here of some beautiful oryx at, um, in the Nama Brand National, uh, in the Nama Brand Park, it's a private park next to Sossos Flay and the Nama Kluif National Park. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'll let you know where that is in the comments down below. But even on the tripod, looking at of course at 500 mils with us we had a breeze that was coming into us and i had the the shade hood on just that hood was just collecting the air uh, the wind and it was as you can see here just shaking and with the 500 mil you need to have another tripod or at least on a sandbag or some uh, or beanbag rather wh whatever works for you but it needs to be on a stable surface particularly in video mode. I think you could get away with it handheld, of course, uh, taking stills, absolutely no problem there, and I didn't have a problem with it, but video, you need to have it on a tripod, and I was using the fluid head. The difference between having the fluid head and not having the fluid head is just leagues, leagues apart, so if you can get yourself, particularly for those videographers out there, um, get yourself a, a, a decent tripod get yourself a fluid head because I wish I had done it before. And if you are one of those folks who are doing a lot more stills, you don't have to worry so much about the fluid head, but of course having a tripod head um, really, really helps. I did some uh, shots here as well of night skies and um, that's of course uh, just on time lapse. And in that instance, you would need to have a tripod. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, for stills and time lapses, you need the, you need the tripod, but this 500, versus the, the 7200, that's the big difference. 7200, absolutely fine and works really, really well for your stills, not so great with the video, but the 500 is absolutely amazing, both with in the video mode and of course in, in, um, in your stills mode as well. And absolutely fine with the FTZ adapter here. And this all fits together. Um, I've just taken it apart for ease of, otherwise I hit things and you know just generally drop it. So yeah, I, I, I highly, highly recommend using the FTZ adapter. I had no problems with it. As I said before though, make sure you've got the firmware updated. <laughs> oh, because if you don't have the firmware updated, then they don't like to speak to each other, these lenses. I can tell you that right now. One quick thing I need to mention, however, is I only had one FTZ adapter with me. So I traveled with the 35 millimeter F1.8 that you're seeing me on now, attached to the one Nikon uh, Z6 II, and of course I had the FTZ adapter on, on the other camera, and then either the 500 or the 70 to 200 attached to it. Um, I think, f looking back, I would have liked to have had a second FTZ, adap FTZ adapter on the second camera, so I had both zoom and, of course, the prime, but both of the longer length lenses um, attached to the camera so I could switch between them, particularly um, in this one, in, in, in on the ground because the animals are either walking away from you or they're walking towards you or, or sideways and then occasionally you might want to f f 
um, switch from the 500 over to the 200 uh, or the 70 uh, or the 70 to 200 with that versatility of the zoom lens. So in that way, I think I would, if I did it again, I would have two FTZ adapters uh, with me in the bag so I could have both of my bigger, longer lenses readily available on each camera. Because what I was using, the this beautiful, uh, I love this 35mm f1.8 lens. I think the price is good. I think the images are really good and it's so versatile. Um, and I'm a fan of prime lenses. But anyway, I was using the 35mm to do the stars, to do some more landscape type stuff. And when I was filming on the ground myself, I use the 35mm. So not as often. Most of the animal images, the animal videos, the wildlife stuff I was doing with these longer lenses because in the national parks in Namibia if you don't know you can't drive off-road you have to stick onto the road and animals can be far away and you need the longer lenses and these two were absolutely amazing for me of course now Nikon have released the longer lenses so it, it's changed the game a bit but those of you who still have these older lenses or are looking at second-hand market thinking okay cool I'm gonna update I'm gonna update I'm going to upgrade my camera body but I still have these lenses or I can get a great deal on on these two particular lenses hey I'm gonna go that route until I can afford to move on to the S-line lenses hey don't be scared to do that because they work I have to also say when we're talking about the cameras um, that when you are using these beautiful new mirrorless cameras I made the big error of not taking an XQD card with me. I know those of you who are saying you absolute idiot you are quite right I did not take an, F uh, an XQD card with me which meant if I quickly look at the camera that I was not able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second, um, which was seriously annoying. Um, and when I was filming at 10 uh, at 1080 um, at 120 frames per second, there was issues with the buffering as well. Um, I could do this, which was quite strange. The 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 four times slow at 1080. Um, what was I shooting at? Sorry, I was shooting at 1080. 24 frames a second five times slow that those worked on my X on my SD card but they those other modes weren't able to of course buffer at the speed that you need with that the XQD cards have so bear that in mind folks if you're gonna be wanting to use that you know that 4k 60 frames a second that this camera offers and I think with firmware updates going forward they might offer you know that 120 frame come on Nikon you can do it then you're gonna need that XQD card don't mess around with the SD cards get the Q XQD cards because I wish I'd had it and I yeah live and you learn now if there's anything that you want to ask me about any of this gear please do not hesitate to leave your comments down below and I will answer them as soon as I can um, I absolutely loved using all of this gear and if you enjoyed the content today once again please hit that subscribe hit that like as well as the notification bell so you know when we'll be releasing our next video got some really cool content coming your way I took a DJI Mini 2 with me and got some amazing drone footage here's a quick preview I'll be talking about that drone and how I took that footage out in the field but for now see you in the next one Bye-bye. <laughs>